It's a huge dwarf. Oh, it's not the only lightning he has. Look. Ooh. Would like to see that comes the watcher. All right, we have the blue dwarven player Sauron versus this, the white Isengard player in the brandy at the bottom side of the map. Good versus evil El Clasico. I mean, it's a good map, I believe, for either faction because this map should give you the chance to get to the mid to late game power spike way sooner and also open opportunities to turn the game into a long game. You know, imagine you see Dwarven faction full potential versus Isengard faction full potential in the mid to late game could, quite be, could be quite inter interesting and also entertaining. But maybe it will also be a fast game. Dwarves have definitely the chance to snowball their lead into a quick victory. So when you get one or two great pushes off, you can definitely snowball because the distance and the size of the map becomes meaningless as you can build multiple offensive mineshafts and teleport your units pretty much in a second to the desired location, which is going to be hard to defend. Isengard has to try to scout good enough to deny the builder to get to his location and, you know, deny pretty much the Dwarven player to snowball. What's up, Abyssians? Abu? Grumpy. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Appreciate it. All right. So the plan is to start with a work pit into the work packs from Isengard player Andy Brandy. And of course, we're going to have a pikeman opening for dwarves. So the plan is simple. It's about creeping. Zira, thanks for the raid. Appreciate it. Zira, can you play your games afterwards against the winner? It would be amazing if you can. Because I asked Sauron and Andy Brandy, they are both willing to play their games. The winner is going to face against you. So if it's fine for you, you can play right after the best of nine sem uh, finals of the loser bracket. I have bad news about BFME 1, boys. Uh, the initial plan was to start the stream with a BFME 1, a tournament game between Fishy and Stevie. Uh, they scheduled the games around 9pm, but then the uh, Fishy was actually there, but Stevie didn't show up. And Stevie just came when I was starting my stream for this Rise of the Witch King game. And for that reason, they will be playing off stream. Um, 3 2. Fishy. Because the last game was quite long, you know, the Mordor against Rohan. So basically, you need to now play on the map Westfold. You play Mordor, he plays Rohan. So you swap the matchup. You play uh, Mordor, he plays Rohan. If you win, you are the winner. Then you move to the finals. If Stevie wins, you go for a deciding game. Oh, that's bad. Oh, the build has been killed from Sauron, by the way. Very good job here from the Warpex. It's amazing. But they need to avoid fighting against those pikemen. That's also very important. The creep um, secured. The, the, you know, the troll creep with the pikemen. You can see they are level 2. That's good for Sauron. But losing a builder, of course, is always painful. Especially in this map. You need at least two builders to expand simultaneously. There is going to be the first push. The offensive mineshaft has been built. That is another one. And that's the snowball effect, right? You build mineshafts next to each other. It means even if your opponent manages to destroy one of them, you can still use the other one. The Guardians in the melee range, that's not something you want to fight against. There comes the Warchant on the Warpex. Remember, the Warchant is now able to stack with the whole ability, which is quite new. It was not like this before in the earlier patches of the patch 2.02. And also this mineshaft is going to be taken down. You can see the mobile units, the warp packs are actually definitely doing a good job. In terms of map control. And the crossbowmen are definitely, can definitely kite those guardians. And they are wasting their time. The rallying call is active, but it's going to go on cooldown very, very soon. So it's going to be quite easy to deal with that. After the first couple of minutes into the game, we have 350 command points for both the players. The Sauron was able to creep, but the money he got from the creep, he needed to invest into the builder. There comes the second builder. This mineshaft has to be destroyed very, very soon. But Isengard can do, and should be doing in my opinion, is to buy the upgrade on the fortress for 500 resources. You get lots of vision control, which can be quite helpful to deal with the sneaky builders trying to, you know, get some mineshafts next to your base. Another creep will be secured. I'm not sure about that even. I wanted to, but we couldn't. Uh, they will now play off stream. But maybe when they are done until we are done with the best of seven, we can also cast their replays to see their games. Isengard can win, I think, when you get to the mid game with the devastation, you know, with the money boost you get. Isengard army is pretty strong also with the, you know, Uruks being cheaper, upgrades, Lords, Sharku, Saruman can be quite devastating. And I also believe that Sauron can be actually a very good hero in this matchup because it's hard to dodge that. The only thing that kind of makes it difficult, in my opinion, is that 
Isengard has now no easy way of notifying leadership bonuses, which dwarves can quite easily get from the battle wagon. Remember, Kribin has been reworked. That means it won't shut down leadership bonuses anymore, which will make this a bit harder. The all-out potential from dwarves is going to be a bit stronger in this in this patch. And the only way Isengard could actually deny your leadership bonuses is through Wormtongue, a hero we barely get to see. Also very squishy hero who might get one-shotted by those palanxes of the Dwarven faction. You will not be able to finish off this mineshaft. The warp packs are running into the tower range, but they are level 2. If you can save one of them, you should be good to go. This mineshaft has been demolished. Lots of pressure on dwarves. And the Uruks, they will be able to de deal with those palanxes, no problem. Remember, you can't really disengage from them. So you better stand there, destroy the mineshaft and accept your death. Because I'm streaming this game right now. <laughs> I, I can't stream two games at the same time. It's not possible. What's up, Falcon? Falcon. Uh, WCS2. Exclamation mark WCS2 for the Rise of the Witch King bracket. This is life, of course. They're talking about BFM1 later on. There is a battle wagon into the banner. And that's the power spike I'm talking about. Dwarves can definitely reach this way easier compared to other factions. You know, the leadership plus the buff going to be still quite impactful. Isengard has almost 5 power points in the bank. Dwarves are up to almost 8 power points in the bank. Command points are looking identical, but that's going to be the power push. 2 pikemen, 1 guardian. Oh, but if you touch... Oh my goodness, he could turn and touch him one time. Remember the one touch, the one laugh tap you give to the battle wagons with the pikemen is more than enough to one-shot them. But the war packs from... Andy Brandy are doing a phenomenal job, actually. Phenomenal job. The Man of Deal. And also, the Battle Wagon is getting chunked quite decently from the Warp Packs, but they should not be fighting around the Fortress range. This Battle Wagon will need ages. You can see the damage output is very bad, actually. You will actually need, like, a minute to destroy this. But luckily, we have Guardians and Pikemen, and they will hit like a truck. I not creeping in the meantime. Has also Lords on the field, who is gonna be also good against the battle wagon because you can keep him sh keep shooting at him all the time. I like the way that Sauron is playing it slowly. He's making you know he's taking his time, progressing slowly, doesn't rush anything, which is I believe the right approach, which will also give him the chance to bring a second battle wagon to the table, you know, bring more reinforcements and make the push overall stronger and more effective. Quality beats quantity. Lourdes is gonna be nice though, because he can... This is gonna be the battle wagon you need to kill first. The one with the leadership. But I think he's too far away now from the army. I'm assuming you need to be a bit closer. There comes the Vorchan quite delayed from Isengard. He already lost the vast majority of his army. Battle wagon is now coming closer. Lourdes hitting from a long distance. But of course, the double buff guardians with whole crown stands are quite beefy and tanky. So Lourdes needs to shoot them like four times to kill them. But still a big W here for the dwarves, as expected. Battle Wagon, maybe a third one for the heal. Yeah, but it looks like he's disengaging for now. Lourdes all about to hit level 2, which will unlock the Carnage. And of course, Lourdes unlocks also the splash damage he has with the Carnage he can dive in. But you still need to be careful. Carnage is not like a Blade Master. It doesn't give you too many tanky stats. It's more like a damage boost. But you will still receive lots of damage during it. Carnage available. Will you use it for this couple of pikemen? That's gonna be the big question. You can see even the couple of pikemen are actually able to hurt Lourdes quite decently. Isengard should be expanding a bit more. He will be able to destroy this mineshaft. Sauron doesn't cancel it. He will lose the whole money 300. I think he cancelled it. But the builder is not in the range to build a wall hub. He will get bitten and even if he doesn't die, the war packs are able to waste so much time from the builder. It's pretty good actually. Andy Brandy is doing a phenomenal job this game. Command points are pretty identical. Andy Brandy has almost the power points for the Devastation, 12 power points for Dwarves. He has the chance to summon the Hobbits if he wants to, which can also be, you know, used with the big push, which is not gonna happen anytime soon. Because look at the minimap. There is not a single offensive mineshaft beside the ones in the middle. So what Dwarves can do in the best case is use them and then walk all the way to the spot, which will give Isengard enough time to react to that. And he went for the rebuild. The Battle Wagons are on the hunt. Russia, thanks for the six months, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm from I'm from Germany, but I was born and raised in Turkey. Underscore Shah just resubscribed for six months. Ahoy. 
Good luck for the BFME one final. Thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you, and also for the huge sport for six months. Lords level almost five, by the way. That's pretty good. Battle wagons are good sporting units. That's the question from you, Pelliman. So they can give you mobile leadership. They can give you mobile healing, like a well. They can also be used as like a um, trampling unit. They can be upgraded with Man of Steel for more damage against units, with X throwers for more damage against buildings. So they are very really versatile. You, you can use them in pretty different, you know, lo lots of different ways. And also their trample damage is pretty nuts, actually. They are hitting very hard. Their only weakness, their main weakness, of course, is are the pikemen. So the pikemen touch you, you die. The positioning is the most important thing when you play with those battle wagons. All right, so well for the healing, banner for the leadership, and man of deal for the damage output. That's the trio, the monster trio. In the meantime, Isengard is putting constant pressure. That's pretty nice to see. He also went for the devastation, which has been used. So he's going for the Uruk pit number two. Maybe Berserker could be actually quite decent. Because Berserker is splash damage. Maybe you can put a couple of them inside your army. And then you have like a little bit more DPS. Which your opponent can't really ignore. But in the meantime, look at this. Wildman of Dunland putting pressure. You know, Isengard is everywhere. And that's going to be the power spike of Isengard in the mid game. In which your eco is going to be strong enough to out spam pretty much every single faction in the game. And all you need to do is survive these three guardians and one pikeman push. There's no war riders, which means no trample damage, no fast way of clearing this up. So he needs to take a melee fight. But oh my god, there comes the devastation money, boys. Would you look at that? The white wizard Saruman. Don't let him speak, or a, or a spell will be upon us. Kill him quickly. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Boom, son. But he's getting chunked. Uh, wizard will pay, as Trivial would like to say. The battle wagons are too far away from them to support them. And level 2 for this dude is a massive power spike. The fireball is so nice, but you need to get to level 2. Don't die, wizard. Don't underestimate the palanxes. They, are, they have been trained for this. They have been teached how to deal with dwarves. I mean, how to deal with wizards. Almost level 2, but still needs a kill. But Isengard was able to defend this, no problem. You can see the battle wagons are not good harassers. So they need some, some time to destroy furnaces. They will still be able to take it down. But three of them are required. And it will still take you around about 30 Against seconds. Against the power of mortal. Oh! There can be no victory. Beautiful trample. Beautiful execution. Nice dodging of the pikemen. That's very important. Where is Lourdes at? I think Lourdes is around this spot. Yeah, he has leadership unlocked. You can see them glowing. And yeah, that means, you know... 25% more damage, armor, and also combat experience will be increased. Maybe Sharko could be also nice. You know, Sharko can be used to chase those battle wagons down all the time. There is the one hero crossbow man. <laughs> Shoot at him. Shoot. 650 command points for Isengard, 625 command points for dwarves. He has almost 3k in the bank. And you see, that's the reason why I like this map a lot. Because this map gives you the chance to see a whole lead game potential. Of these two factions, which might also bring us later on to the point of seeing upgraded orcs, for example. What's up, Dexter? Degree? What's up, my friend? A new power is rising, boys, and victory might be at hand. Warren Riches, so pretty much like industry for the Mordor and Isengard faction, in good faction, which is gonna give you the same stats on this, you know, blue animation glow on your mineshaft to make you rich and i'm expecting a hero it might be either king dean Soon or Master Elf, you will Gimli. enjoy the fabled hospitality of the so who you think is going to be recruited boys who you think is going to be recruited is it going to be Gle uh, gloin and uh, not gloin king dean or gimli that's going to be the big question i think gimli is going to be the go-to hero right because when you get level 5 with gimli i mean there is lords who can always stop you from acting right but if you get level 5 and cripple is on cooldown, you can hunt down the wizard and also loot. They have no chance. Gimli, one of the strongest melee heroes in the game. And he will go for Gimli indeed. So the dwarf is here. It's a huge dwarf. Oh, what a brass on your face, man. But they were on hot ground. That's beautiful fireball. You see the power spiking wizard. And that's the reason why this dude is so much better in my opinion. His level 2 power spike is so good. Holy moly, level 4 unlocked, and level 6 is going to be yet another power spike. What a beautiful blast. And that's a choke point area, right? You get out of the mineshaft, everyone is located and clumped into one region, and the blast was able to deal so much damage. Holy quackamole, that's what you like to see. 
In the meantime, Uruks are fighting against Guardians. Uruks are stronger. And also, if level 2, they will also deal more damage. You can see they're, you know, smashing those Guardians into pieces. 775 command points against 675 command points. But Devastation is so helpful. He will be able to use it for a second time very soon. He has Lord's Leadership, almost pillage unlocked. He has Saruman level 4. Isengard is pretty much unleashed. Unleashed, boys. Saruman can also level up. Gimli is here, level 1, it's hard for him to catch up, he needs to be at bare minimum level 3, the leap attack is going to be very important, level 2 I mean, to get experience, so you need to extra a few times, get him level 2, and then you can, you know, jump on their face multiple times, get him level 5, and that's the power spike you'll be looking for when you play dwarves, because that will unlock your slayer, which gives you the chance to deny all your weaknesses of being sloppy, lazy, and, you know, extremely small, you will become big, and also hit like a truck plus you will run like speedy gonzalez but you need to be level 5 first or level 2 for the leap lords can always cripple you but lords doesn't care about this dwarven hero and the battle wagons are fighting andy brandy in the building there comes the fireball doesn't really do much i think the fireball has been missed i think it's pretty much similar situation to the gfme one in which the fireball has like a limited range is over committing to level 3 mineshaft with the Saruman, is it worth it? And oh my, he got the experience with Gimli. And now Lords is saying, you know what, I don't care. He's gonna int and feed and die on purpose to finish the mineshaft with level 3 dwarven riches. And now you might be asking yourself, and I want to hear your opinion in the comment section, in the, in the, in the chat, I mean. Guys, do you think it's worth it? Do you, say, do you think it's good to lose both your heroes for a level 3 mineshaft. I don't think it's good, my friend. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's good. It's not good because the revive time in this game is so long. But he has 15 power points. I, must, I think you can't even go for the Watcher. You need to go now for Field of Fires after the Devastation, if I'm not mistaken. Which is not bad for Isengard by all means. But it doesn't give you any combat strength. It doesn't give you any combat potential. And you will not be able to one-shot the army with the Watcher. And he's gonna go for the industry diversity. Uh, this has to be unlocked before the industry. So five for this, ten for this. Industry has been used on the furnace level three behind the Uruk pit. I mean between the Uruk pit and the, the war pit level two. Finally, Sharku being recruited for the first time is level one. And there are no pikemen. Imagine a war rider. Where are the war riders when we need them? He's gonna go for one of them. Gimli is so deadly at this point. So deadly. And this push might be actually quite effective. If Gimli gets level five out of this fight, it's gonna be quite hard. Leap ja nice dodging, nice dodging, dude. Very well dodging here from the Isengard player. Palantir is gonna be used for additional movement speed. I mean, you can't disengage anywhere that comes to the rallying call. Gimli is looking for the extra, will be throwing his eggs, almost level four. A level and a bit more needed for the ultimate power spike that comes to level four ability unlocked. Charku is fighting, dealing damage, some damage, but comes to heal almost back to full HP. Gimli inside the Guardian army, which is hard to be breaking, broken through. There comes the cavalry for a trample. And with the whole ability actually chunked decently. But in the meantime, Isengard is just losing too much. Too much map control, too much momentum. The one mistake, the one overcommitment. That's why you should never over overcommit to any on anything. Losing your high valuable heroes like Saruman level 4, Lourdes level 5 was just a big mistake. But there comes Lourdes. And Lourdes is faster than Gimli because Gimli is only level 4. He has the chance to cripple him. And that's the plan from the fighting Urukai. You can cripple him and then he is on cooldown. We know that. It means there is no sustain, but he has 20 power points in the pocket. Will he use them eventually? There comes Carnage, and Lords is showing everyone once and for all that he is the best hero in the game, the most cost efficient hero in the game by far. We have 2500, but I think he's gonna revive his Gimli with that money. Dwarven Riches has been used for the third time. So Isengard and uh, Dwarves, they have now crazy eco advantages with the industry uh, for devastation for the one faction, Dwarven Riches for the other faction. Four battle wagons cruising through the jungles of Farhad, trying to, you know, be annoying. Well, double man of the deal. Nah, nah, well, extra, mana, and man of the deal. So every single combination possible has been unleashed. Lourdes needs one more level for the pillage, which means even more wealthiness, more money for Isengard. So, and he can even go for <laughs> fuel the fires later on. Imagine that you have the vestation, industry, pillage, and fuel the fires. Saruman, the White Wizard, is back in the business. Level 4, that's pretty good. Level 6, Unthunderbolt. It's a very huge power spike. You can even go for the Lightning Sword or Lightning Strike from the Fortress if you want to. It's a level 3 furnace with self-defense. That comes to Fireball to save the D. 
9 75 command points versus 825. The problem is that dwarves have not only more command points available, but also they have way more units upon the field compared to Isengard. Isengard needs to make more units, recruit more units, make a bigger army. And with the industry being available, he's just wasting time, should be using it right off the bat. Maybe you can go for the armory, maybe dwarves can do the same. But Forgeworks is still level 1. He's gonna go for the Man of Steel with Fire Rose eventually, it's a level 3 building. He has the chance to buy the Fire Rose if he wants to. And there comes the industry, once again on the level 3 furnace behind. And it's gonna grow him rich, right? The Vestition will be used very soon, once again. Four Battlegons chasing down the Builder. The Builder can't get away from this. And will be taken down. And also this builder might be in trouble. We have the dwarf. We have the Uruk Deathbringers. Let's go, man. Uruk Deathbringers. This game is so good, man. It's one of the better games I was actually able to cast in the World Championship. To see a whole potential. Look this. All the heroes besides Warm Tonk. We have Zelot up on the field. That's dope. That's really dope. Trampling, that's good. I want to see the Zelot performing, but I think they are kind of weak against Men of Deal. And they will also have Fire Rose very, very soon. And with Fire Rose, they also deal a great amount of damage to the buildings. You can build walls, but the people are not doing this. Look at this four battle organs, dude. That's crazy. Okay, so I, I, the map is kind of split in two pieces. You can see that. So it's like a 50-50 situation. It will definitely bring us later on to the 25 power spike. But you can see Isengard doesn't have a 15 power point yet from his spellbook. So he still needs to have a pick 15 power point first before he can do anything. Beautiful fireball coming in from the young wizard Saruman, all about to hit level 5. And level 6 is the power spike we are looking for. For the Thunderbolt. Then you have two range abilities, right? Fireball plus Thunderbolt, you can use them in rotation. And then, you know, when you are lucky, the longer the game goes on, the closer you will get to the Dominate. And this is where the fun begins, boys. This one will give you the chance to steal a whole army forever, permanently. You know, now it's debatable if it's better than Water Power from Gandalf. I think situationally it, it's better because why would you deal kill them when you can steal them and make them your own army forever? There is no reason to steal them. Charku level 2, Mindshot has been destroyed. And they are also healing up over time. So they have the Storm Wolf level 2, they will become resistant to knockback. And this is, you know, this is gonna be, look at this. <laughs> you get, you lose armor, but you get, you gain 150% more damage. There comes a big Dwarven push, including Gimli. He's gonna get level 5 here, by the way. Watch this. Boom, Slayer unlocked. The Watcher is available for Isengard. I think he's, you know, kinda expecting to defend himself with the Watcher exclusively. Because Eisen, uh, Dwarves can also use the Man of Deal offensively. He has 17 power points after the Man of Deal. He's very close to 25, unlike Isengard, who just very recently picked his 15. There comes the Watcher. On what? On the Battle Wagons, I think. He killed all the Battle Wagons. That's good, though. And he needs to rotate back. Two Deathbringers, Lourdes and Saruman are coming to eat Isengard main fortress. So I plan to go to bed early today, but Shanks hits my plans with like a truck. Hey, man, Bench, what's up, my friend? Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Games are live? No, it's pre-recorded. I was recording them yesterday for you, and I just upload this as a video, so you can watch this on Twitch. Falcon. Alright. So, 1,000 command points for Dwarves. And here's the one rank. Dude, is this gonna be one of the legendary games in which we're gonna see the, the lady? Beautiful Visa Plus or Fireball Redder. Big men of the army. Uruk Deathbringers, they need to disengage. They are being chung, 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 chunked. I mean, this is a much better summon compared to the Rangers. The fire damage you get additionally to your, you know, arrow damage power. Oh boy. Oh boy. Where is the cripple head? Did he lose his Lords? How this. Oh, he got crippled. Never mind. Where is. But Lords in the melee range. Why would you be in the melee range? Uh, Oh, Saruman, we are looking at the White Wizard, boys. Look, the Deathbringers are going ham. We are looking for it. Boom! Unfortunately, you get no experience whatsoever for killing the summon units. And now Gimli is the last man standing. He's being shot in the face, level 7. And Gimli, the dwarf, give experience. Yeah, he got the experience for it. Level 6 unlocked. Thunderbolt available, ladies and gentlemen. Would you look at this? But we have 25 power points in the bank for Sauron. 25. So he has the chance to do either the... I think you... I don't know if you can choose the Summon Citadel or... I mean the Earthquake. 
but either one of these will be available. Uh, the Summon Citadel is not the best. I think it's still not, you know, bad. Because if a additional Citadel, of course, a Fortress, I mean. And uh, you can also use the launch, the Mighty Catapult from this. He's going to go for it, actually. The question is going to be the positioning. Where is he going to use it? It has not the unlimited range. So you need to put it semi-close to the enemy Fortress if you want to use it. I think you can maybe use it here and still be able to shoot to the spot. But if you, sh you know, use it here, it won't be able to reach this. Okay, the creep will be secured. Charku, level 4. Yeah, you know, the only thing is he lost the Lord. But I think besides this, it was a flawless battle for Isengard. And now this hero has all three power points or abilities unlocked. But again, you want to still avoid fighting against Gimli. That's very really important. So you need Lords to keep Gimli checked, okay? The problem is Isengard 25 power point is going to be way more devastating. You know, the summon dragon, of course, is better in almost every single circumstance compared to the Warven Citadel summon. And the Uruk Deathbringers are going crazy. No armor yet. Oh, he has armor, never mind. He's going for Forge Bleeds and level 3 for the heavy armor. Oh boy. This is a whole late game potential in half, boys. What's up, Narsi? 11 power points, still 13 away from getting to the 25. Gimli is going to be revived very soon. I don't know what the Dwarven player is doing. I don't know how much money he has. And if he will be able to get Lady Galadriel on the field very, very soon. Because he has the one ring, you can see on the Fortress. If this game also includes Lady Galadriel, I will lose my mind. Okay, it's the first game in the best of seven. Beautiful Fireball. Thunderbolt can be used on the back line. But he's tanking damage. Oh! Boom! Chunk you and this in my opinion is better than Easter Light. Maybe not, <laughs> but this one is definitely better than Easter Light and Lightning Sword combined. The fireball is just too good. They play off stream right now. I don't know uh, who's winning. We will you know get to know after this after the schemes. So dwarves are now in a defensive situation. He's down to 875 command points. Isengard is up to 1000. Um, that's going to be a whole, whole Isengard army now with the armory being level 3. You get Forge Blades already purchased. Heavy armor coming up next. So Uruk army. Remember what Gimli likes to see? This is not a of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. Their armor is going to be thicker. And their shields will be even broader. I don't even know if it's a word. 17 power points versus 6. Dwarven Citadel has not even been summoned yet. Can you imagine that? He's holding on it for a long time already. I, I don't know why though. Like, why, why would you not just use it and get it on cooldown so you can use it eventually again? Because the earlier you use it, the more faster you will get the chance to use it again. Saruman, we gotta keep an eye on the wizard. He's level 7, dude. I'm gonna, I want, I, want to, I want him to be level 10 so badly. I know it's gonna take him a long time. Maybe it's gonna take him the same amount of time like he got from level 1 to level 7. Because the, you know, the higher level you are, the more experience you require to get to level 8, 9, 10, you know. Beautiful trample with the battle wagons. No pikemen, big punishment. The builder will be eventually taken down as well. I mean, he doesn't even react to that. The Uruk Deathbringers, they cannot really fight against it, I believe. There are just too many men of the ill, too much firepower with leadership, with fire arrows. It's hard. But now we have the pikemen with forge bleeds, but still no match against guardians. 11 power points in the bank. We also have a rotation coming from the ex uh, wildman extrovers and Uruk pikemen. Charku level 5, Saruman level 7. Where is Lourdes at? That's what I want to know. Lourdes is back in the business, almost level 8. So basically, every hero besides Charku is already in a very, very high skill level. I mean, you know, power level. You need only level 7 for the man eater. And eventually level 10 for Saruman. But I think level 6 already a huge power spike for the wizard. Which you can be happy with. Four battle wagons. Oh, this is gonna be big, boys. Alright, industry has been used. Isengard is pretty much unleashed, but dwarves are also not poor. He has 3k in the bank. He can even go for King Din if he wants to. Will he use this offensively? That's gonna be the big question. The problem is going to be if you use it offensively, can you protect it for a long time? Because you need to buy this Numenorean stonework or Dwarven Stonework manually. It won't have it right off the bat, so you need to invest additional resources to get it done, you know? Pretty and thanks for the primers for the first time coming to the channel. Really means a lot. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Pretlian just subscribed. Welcome to be on Standards Crew. No way for Aizen to kill this army. What do you mean? Aizen got his uh, Saruman level 6, level 7. 
and has upgraded units with Deathbringers inside of that. Uruk with Horch Blades and Heavy Armor. How do you... What? Oh, what, what do you mean? There comes the... Wizard Tower on your face. That's not the only lightning he has. Look, he's walking through it. He lost the vast majority of his army and now he has another one. I mean, this is legit Pikachu what I'm watching here, man. Pika Pikachu, do it. There comes the Dwarven Citadel Summon. But Isengard army is just too powerful, dude. Where is Gimli at? I don't know, the Uruk Deathbringers, look at them go! Look at them go! You see, you need to buy this Dwarven Stormwork, uh, you know, separately. And it, it's gonna go down. You can't save this. There comes the Hobbit Summon, Isengard Power Points, that's a quick question, boys. 27 Power Points in the bank. 27. The Hobbits are doing a good job. Heal is gonna be used, I mean, Rebuild is gonna be used on the Fortress. Uh, Lords is killing the Halflings. What a madman. Look at the minimap, boys. Isengard is holy moly. There comes Gimli with the leap attack. He has the Slayer available to chase down the heroes. Lords has to keep him checked. It, actually, he was able to save this. It's almost down, and he will now be able to get the Dwarven Stormark. Now, the Isengard heroes might be in a, you know, in, a, in a big problem area. Because, yeah, you can cripple Lords, but the cripple doesn't last forever. Oh, he went for the Dragon Strike. My bad, I missed it. Actually, dealt great amount of damage, but dwarves are just fine. Now the question is, when is gonna be the second 25 power point summon? Because the summon dragon is so much better compared to the dragon strike. He's committing to the level two mineshaft. He has, I mean, he has no more rebuild available. Keep that in mind. That comes Gimli. He's gonna teleport and use Slayer. That his daddy and son side by side versus master and servant, creator and servant. Lourdes doesn't want to cripple Gimli. If you don't cripple him, you will lose your wizard. He crippled him, but way too late. And the wizard dies for a second time. But remember, when wizards die in Middle-earth, they most of the time return stronger. Lourdes is being shot by the extra voice on the face. Gloin is on the hand, but Gloin can't catch up to him. There is no tunnel system you can use to get away. Uh, this dude is hitting. There comes the Watcher! And he killed all the battle wagons. It was a nice beat, but I think Gloin is going to be able to kill you now. Gloin wasn't able to get the last hit on the Lords, and he's going to be only level 1. And also being kind of, you know, kind of punched. And the good thing, I mean, let's talk about the good thing. The good thing is he was able to do a great amount of damage to us, right? That's good. He lost the Forge Works. He needs to rebuild it again. He lost all the battle wagons. And that's going to, you know, take some time to get them back on the field. The bad thing is, he was not able to destroy the Citadel, and he lost once again his Lourdes in Saruman for the second time. Did Lourdes just die? Yes. Okay, so we have Borg Riders, boys, with Forge Blades, Heavy Armor, and also uh, their leader, you know, Sharku, is inside the jeans with the leadership, this one, for more DPS. And also the leadership can stack now with the whole ability plus the war chance. So you can make your war riders actually quite strong with all of that stuff. He's committing. It's tanky now though. Oh, he launched the mighty catapult. Ah, he killed Uruk Pit here. And also the furnace level 3. So there was a beautiful launch mighty catapult actually. And it looks like he will be able to defend this yet one more time. The rebuild is going to be available in a, in a bit. In about a minute from now, maybe less. And you can again save it up to, you know, almost get it back to full HP. It's gonna be great standing point. I mean, th this area is going to be good because dwarves are having like the full control of this area. Nobody was building a single tower in this game, by the way, guys. Not a single tower, which is, uh, you know, not attached to a fortress. And dwarves have still the one rank. So we need to always keep that in mind, okay? If you give them too much time, he will just sit there and wait for 10,000 to recruit Galadriel. L-Y-X, thanks for the... Primers for the second month, my friend. Appreciate the spot. Really means a lot. Thank you, thank you, and welcome back. Lix27 just resubscribed for two months. Ahoy. Thank you so much. What an honor to catch a Shanks commentary live, man. Thank you so much, Astro. Appreciate it. Pineapple, my friend. What's up? Catapult shooting. Doing good, but killing more of his own units than anything else. Isengard is up to 10 power points. And Summon Citadel is almost halfway through. What a game, dude. Level 3. The Uruk Deathbringers, man. The Uruk Deathbringers, they are smashing everything. But they are kind of vulnerable against arrows. Kinda. You see them or oh, not. They actually get chunked a lot. It's one battalion only, man. That's crazy. But they have fire plus rallying call. It kind of makes sense. 
So what is the follow-up here? Maybe you need to make extra overs, you know, more, more of them. I think that's maybe the, the way to go. They can kind of counter the Man of the Ill. There comes Saruman for the third time. He was recruited once and then he got revived twice. Thunder, Lightning Strike is available. Can it reach this? I mean, it's now too late. It's already full HP. Did he use rebuild for this? Nope, he didn't. So it's going to be quite tough to destroy this now. Because you need to go one more time through rebuild. Gloin is tanky, boy. He doesn't die that fast. But you need Warg Riders, dude. Dwarves are kind of getting more map control. They are both sitting on 1,000 command points. So that's like as strong as they can in the lead game. The Vestition has been used. Where is Lourdes at? I'm, I'm curious about that one. I don't see Lourdes. I only see Saruman in Sharku. But you need Lourdes. That's one. You have to get Lourdes. That's legit your only chance to stop Gimli from going on Rampage. Without Lourdes, you can't. Okay. Charku is a little bit too deep there, my friend. Oh. And he's making a couple of mistakes with the heroes now. He's gonna lose also his Charku. Gloin is tanky, boy. Unlike Saruman. But he's not fast, boy. So you can eventually catch him. Is he gonna make... Oh, you actually helped him. You get him closer to the mineshaft. Oh, nice. He killed Gloin, but, you know, that's a, that's a bad thing, actually. Because you killed the, the daddy of Gimli. And he will try to find vengeance. And try to find his revenge for this. So, Saruman, you better pay, pay attention. Lourdes is back in the business. Level almost 9. Very powerful. He just needs to be a bit faster with crippling Gimli. You want to do this quite fast. You know, you don't want to wait until he gets to the range to attack you. Because if he gets the chance to hit you three times, you are dead. Please, what's up, my friend? How many games will be best of seven? John, what's up? What's Galden? Music is a bit flawed sometimes. I can lower this. No problem. Okay. So Eisner is moving through the left side of the map. Uh, dwarves are in the middle. Launch Mighty Catapult is going to be available very, very soon for the second time. And, you know, very soon he will have even a third Fortress. <laughs> Why not? Oh, Gimli Cloud Break. But Saruman gives fear resist and keep that in mind. Why are you doing this, man? Why are you doing this? How many times do you want to get killed by Gimli until you realize, okay, I can't just send my wizard forward like this? Look at him. Look, this one hit, boys. One hit. A second hit's coming very soon. Okay, it looks like he will get away. The Slayer should be getting on cooldown very, very soon. Keep running, Gimli. Keep running, wizard. Keep running. Okay, never mind. He's good. He's good. He's good. 23 power points. There comes the Ranger, uh, White Man of Steel summon for the, for the second time. We have also Dwarven Zealots upon the field. So, the elite units from <laughs> Dwarves. Uh oh. Use thunder, like Thunderbolt. I think you can one shot them. It's gonna Fireball. Fire does. Don't. Fireball does no damage to this battle wagons. No damage at all. Use Thunderbolt. It's gonna use it. I mean, these battle wagons are tanky against magic. What is this, man? How are they so tanky? Okay. I mean, he lost Saruman, but he killed three battle wagons. I, I don't think it's worth, but it's better than nothing. It's a big mistake to send Saruman like this forward, you know? Lourdes is are completely somewhere else. Uruk Deathbringers, I don't know where they are, but I see the Zealots coming. I don't know how they will perform against War Riders. They are immune to Trample, I think. They get, didn't get knocked down on the ground. And they are very strong. With level 5, they also unlocked the Berserker Gang. Gang, or whatever it is called. They will get more movement speed. Pretty much like a um, small Slayer. Galadriel only way? Yeah, he's gonna go for Galadriel very soon, I think. He has 5,000 in the bank. So, there is, I mean, with 1,000 command points plus Dwarven Riches, you get to 10,000 quite fast. Lightning Strike available. Launch the Mighty Catapult available. And Earthquake available too. Maybe all of this together. So, this plus Earthquake maybe can be enough to destroy the Fortress. You wanna take a look into that one. I mean, the fortress has upgrades on it, so it's not going to receive too much damage, but maybe you can destroy everything around the fortress. So you, at this point, when you destroy the Uruk Pit and the War Pit, it might eventually buy you enough time, you know? 6 power points against 9. So Isengard is still far away from his 25. So actually, he still needs like 15 power points for his own Dragon Summon, which is a long way to go. And the most scary part is... 
very soon he will have the second citadel. Imagine you can summon it right here next to this. Then you have like two mighty catapult launching on the enemy fortress. Plus earthquake. Imagine the devastation power you will have. I think at this point just be patient. He will have also very soon Galadriel on the field. Very, very soon. Very, very soon actually. 9,400 boys. You know what time it is. It is time for the <laughs> Elven Queen. Oh, and she's being recruited. Boys. I think the recruit time is quite long. It will maybe take around about two to three minutes, but you know, be patient. And the big the thing is, I think I think Galadriel can't be crippled by Lords. I think she's immune to that. She's a ring hero after all, so you can't really stop her. She's the, the problem is not only about her damage, which is quite devastating. She has like the knockback damage, you know, she can one shot everything, but also her tankiness and mobility. All of this combined. I'm not mobile, actually not very mobile, still very much more mobile compared to Sauron, but her tankiness is scary. Oh boy, summon for the second time very, very soon, boys. Very, very soon. Uh, lol, that, sum that summon is perma here? Yeah, this one is perma. This one is until it's getting destroyed. <laughs> Look, Andy was expecting to disappear this for, you know, automatically. <laughs> He's saying, from here, yeah, pff, second on the way. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Second on the way, I will have another one, and another one, and another one. Oh, trampling, that's good. How far away from the 25? Dude, he still needs so much. He still needs so much. Guys, soon, hey boys, listen to me. Very soon, this gate here, this gate here, is going to open itself. And we will enjoy the hospitality of the dwarves. All I want is Galadriel. She's coming. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. He could have played this so much better with the heroes. I think. You soon, know, Master Elf, you will enjoy the fabled hospitality of the dwarves. Soon, Master Uruk, you will enjoy the hospitality of the Elven Queen Galadriel. Very soon. The final countdown. Alright, he's dealing some economical damage with Dwarf Riders, it's good, but I think you need more than that because Dwarves are still at 1000. Even if you destroy a couple of the mineshaft, it doesn't really matter. Multiple of them are just level 3, 1, 2, this one is level almost 3 as well. Look, level 3, he has so many of them. Citadel will be summoned. You know, he has the chance to summon it for the second time. And look, I think that's going to be quite scary because imagine you can... Yeah, he's going to summon it. Look, he's controlling now both the sides. You see that? This one and this one. So, it's like a triangle situation. Two catapults plus earthquake. I want to see the damage output they will be able to deal. He's going to go instantly for the Dwarven Stormwork. Isengard committing to this. Uh, but there is, you know, there are Zealots plus Gimli protecting. It's not going to be easy. There comes the catapult shot bomb. Bam. So he was able to destroy. And the problem is if you dis don't destroy them in a, in, a, in a bit, he will do this every time. <laughs> he will have a third one too. And then a fourth one. And would you look at this? Who is here? Lady Galadriel is here, boys. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when she comes for you? All right. There comes the freezing rain early because he can use Cloud Break to cancel it. So you wanna wait for Cloud Break, then you wanna use it. Ooh. <laughs> This is not fun to play against. I am assuming that. I don't think it's fun to play against, boys. Oh, boy. Do it. Do some lightning strike. It still only counts as one. Look. Saur Saruman using his attack speed of 0.1119 seconds to kill a builder. Attacking once every decade. Uh, 24 power points for dwarves and Isengard. is also at 23 power points. So he will very soon be able to summon his own dragon. Earthquake is available for a long time now. He didn't even use it yet. The launch Mighty Catapult is a quarter backup. So again, very soon, in about a, two minutes from now, he will have <laughs> two more shots. <laughs> How oh, tragic. tragic. Yeah, Russia got timed out by stream elements for using too many capital letters. My stream elements bot doesn't like capital letters, boys. All right, so 24 power points against 25. You can't have another 25, that's not possible. What a lead game potential, dude, from these two players. Hobbits are chasing down Sharko, who is 1 HP. You could use the man eater that comes to Cloud Break, then you cannot move. You shall not pass, as Gimli would, I mean, not Gimli, as Gandalf would like to say. That comes to Watcher. 
An earthquake has been used too. Look, he has zero production building. He has only, I mean, he has like two more. Uruk pit and a warp pit here. But earthquake was still hurting. Look at this. He's like prisoned. A third one, a third citadel should be summoned here. And a fourth one here. Then you have like, you look at this. Bam, 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 bam. It's like a sandwich and a half boys. If you get to this point, you know. Galadriel is, you know, just two shotting your furnaces. Don't mind her. Ignore her if you can. Just two shotting simultaneously. I mean, you know, it's hard. It's hard to play against that. Where is Saruman at, actually? I see Sharku and Lord. Did he lose Saruman one more time? I think he did. I don't see a white glowing hero beside these two Isengard heroes. I'm assuming he's dead again. But he has 24 power points. Still needs a power point for his 25. Oh boy, it's so hard to destroy this too, right? How we destroy this? Isengard is still money, by the way. It's not like he's poor, but he's dropping down to 725 command points. And look at this. It's a level 3 furnace getting poor shotted. Almost three shotted. It's minus 100 command points in the bank from Isengard. It's a desperate commitment. It looks like the ring heroes are the way to break the curse of an infinite gameplay. You know, when you when you just don't find the one way to win the game, get Galadriel on the field. Maybe that's the way to go. Did he use? Did he miss the rebuild? I think he did miss the rebuild. Summon dragon is available. Yeah, he, he missed the rebuild. You see, summon dragon is available. Look at the minimap, boys. What you gonna do with the summon dragon? That's gonna be the big question. Can you combine this maybe with the dragon strike? But he, let's assume, let's go from the best case scenario. Dominic, by the way, thanks for the Primus for 16 months, my man. Thank you so much for the huge support to the channel for 16 months already. Dominii underscore K just resubscribed for 16 months. Ahoy. Thank you so much. So even if you destroy a fortress, the best case scenario, he won't, he, have, he has two more. <laughs> he has two more of them. How you want to destroy them? You know, you can't summon three dragons. But he has three fortresses. It's a big, it's a big dilemma right there for Isengard. There comes a dragon, still one of the best and most powerful summons in the game. Breath fire. If Isengard can turn this game around, I would, I will start believing in Santa Claus, man. I'm telling you guys, I will expect him to come at, uh, at Christmas Eve to give me, give me some presents, you know. Do it. This is a level three mind, uh, level three barracks. It's gonna kind of still be painful. Oh, he's using the lightning ability. There comes Saruman. I think he has been killed and turned. I will. I was sent back until my task is done. He has been doing this all night long. The dragon. I mean, Andy Brandy was actually playing very, very decently. You know. I mean, obviously in this in this best of seven series, Sauron is the favorite in my opinion because he was the one who was popping off in the past two years. But Andy Brandy can sh shows you, I mean, also a BFME2 player, by the way, who has barely been playing Rise of the Witch King, still making it to the top four is quite impressive. Oh, nice repositioning. Nice repositioning. But the problem is going to be Galadriel. I think she's just doing her own thing there. Where, where is she? Where is she actually? What is Lourdes doing here, man? Lourdes, you are kind of far away. There, you need to counter the enemy heroes. Gloin level 5, another Shake Foundation, another more damage. Dude, I can tell you, if this guy gets level 10, I'm, I'm pretty certain that you can't control the mini heroes. So basically, you can't control the Dwarven Zealots with this ability. But you can control Battle Wagons, you can control, the, you know, Guardians, Palanxes, Men of Steel. You can control all of them, no problem. Shake Foundation just hits hard. Le Gimli level 10. Dude, one of the rarest games we have seen. I think that's the one game in this beta. Which lasted that long. Look, Galadriel. Is she faster than Lourdes? Yeah, she is, actually. You wanna fight, girl? You wanna fight? Turn and fight me. I'll take this. Kick. She's kicking him. She's kicking him, boys. Like, kick him, kick him. Oh, I don't wanna fight against Lourdes. Oh, now she's coming back. She's changing her mind. Kick. Oh, she kicked him in the butt, guys. Did you see this? Kick him in the face, also. One more kick. Yo, she kicked him. She kicked him. She's playing soccer with him because it's World Cup time, you know? There comes a Dragon Strike. In a, in a way, he, he wanted to kill the army, but I think he couldn't catch them. And uh, he's saying GG, rank. Uh, 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 you know, uh, of course, Galadriel was, you know, one of the most MVPs in this game, but I think Isengard kind of outplayed himself more than he got outplayed by his opponent. He made a couple of mistakes with Saruman and Lords, which cost him the game, but it was still a phenomenal game.